Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about the Arex Delta X. And this is actually a really cool pistol coming in from Slovenia. And I wanted to talk to you guys about what's going on with it, the things that I like about what's going on with it, things that I'm not too happy with it, and then kind of talk to you guys about why you might want to actually pick up one of these pistols. But before we get into that, I wanted to take a second to talk to you guys about uh, the Fit and Fire newsletter. If you guys haven't already signed up, I have a newsletter that I put out each and every single week that does a couple of different things. Number one, it tells you what's going on with the channel, what are the upcoming projects that I'm working on. Number two, it's gonna give you a list of really great deals that I'm finding because I know that a lot of people don't like to get a whole bunch of stuff in their emails. So if you wanna like unsubscribe to all of that type of stuff and uh, just get my newsletter, you can do that and kind of save some, <laughs> some of the headache of sifting through all of that type of stuff. And if you guys are looking for some training, I'm going to have a list of instructors that I really like. I will add to them as I do some more training. But if you guys are looking for some training throughout the United States, I'll have a list of upcoming training events for you guys to get in on. If you guys are interested, swing on by fitandfire.com and you can sign up for the newsletter right on the homepage. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about the Arex Delta X Gen 2 here, and uh, this is going to be one of three different variations of this pistol. You have the Arex Delta M, X, and L. The letter designations uh, tell you what size of pistol that you're going to be looking at. This particular one is going to be the X version, and that means that it's going to have a full-size frame with a compact slide. But if you're not someone that likes that type of pistol, then they have a couple different variations to it. As you can see here, they have the M version, which is going to be compact frame, compact slide, and then the L version, which is going to be full-size frame and slide as well. So the difference between a Glock 19, Glock 19X, and a Glock 17 all in one package. You just need to figure out which size you want, find that letter designation, and then you can pick up one of those from there. With that being said, I need to take a second to talk to my YouTube manual reviewer. This right here is a red dot. This pistol has not been modified. This is exactly how it is meant to be and how it should be um, set up. So this is not a modified pistol. This is exactly how it should be. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about this freaking pistol because it's got a lot of great things about this pistol that I like about it and some few things that I'm not that big of a fan of. And uh, I'll explain to you why I'm not a fan of those. And then I'm also gonna talk to you about what's the actual use for a pistol like this. First and foremost, I wanna talk about uh, three things uh, to kind of do a review of this pistol. First and foremost, it's going to be uh, the feel of this pistol. How does it feel in your hand? The next is going to be the sights and the red dot setup, and then finally the trigger. Those are the three things that I look into a pistol from the very get-go, and then I want to share that information with you guys so you can kind of make an educated guess on whether or not this is right for you. And then we can talk about some of the other features as well. Okay, so the grip on this is going to be very, very nice. It's not going to be as steep as a Glock 19, um, and it's going to be very similar to that of like a Smith & Wesson M&P 9. And that's something I really do like about this. So when I draw, it is not going to be extremely aggressive. Now, one of the things that you need to take into consideration is if you're used to a Glock, this is going to be vastly different. So if you draw from the appendix or draw from the side and you bring it up to present, what I have found is my red dot is always going to be in the top of the window. So I'm going to have to tilt my wrist forward or tilt the muzzle down to find that red dot. That's a training issue. That's something that you can work through, but going from a Glock to this, it's going to be completely different. You're gonna bring it up and have to bring that dot down and get it into your line of sight. So just keep that in mind, first and foremost. But one of the other great things is the nice texture that you have right here. The texturing on this is not overly aggressive. It makes it for a very comfortable 
uh, feel in the hand and that will translate into a very comfortable carry as well. And they have placed it very, very high on the frame as well. So you get a good purchase with your support hand as you present and push out. You can feel that you're getting good traction on your support hand with that grip as well. One of the other great features on the frame that involve the grip is going to be this ledge right here near the takedown lever. And uh, that's something I really, really do like. A lot of the competition shooters will call that a gas pedal. A gas pedal is going to be something that you can place your non-firing thumb onto. As you can see right here, you can place that non-firing thumb on that um, ledge right there. And that is really going to help you press the muzzle down and really help you mitigate recoil. So you're going to allow yourself to have a more flat shooting pistol by having that ledge there to be able to press down and get a good firm grip and then hold that there and fire. And that should translate into a more flatter shooting pistol. However, with that being said, since this is a X version, we'll talk about that how does that translate into shooting here in just a little bit. All right, so let's talk about the iron sights and the red dot setup here. The first thing I wanna point out is that the iron sights are exactly how I like them to be set up. First and foremost, they are going to be uh, a high-vis white front sight, and then the rear is going to be serrated blacked out rear, exactly how I prefer my iron sights to be. It's just a preference thing, but coming from the manufacturer that way, that makes it a lot easier if I decide not to put a red dot on here and run just iron sights. I don't have to worry about swapping the sights out to something I prefer. In addition to that, the rear sight is going to have a really nice ledge. So if you don't put a red dot on here, you're going to have a good firm wall to do one-handed manipulations on the slide as well. So that's something I also look for when it comes to iron sights. And uh, A-Rex has done that very well from the manufacturer. The red dot is um, set up pretty standard from like a Glock 19 MOS or some of the other pistols that have the red dot setups, but uh, they are going to come with several different plates. I think uh, four, maybe five different plates for you to mount your uh, red dot onto the pistol. Uh, and then it's going to come with all the hardware as well. Now you can see right here, these screws right here are, um, they're not, they're not like flush fitting screws. So uh, they look kind of weird, but they do the job. And that's really what it boils down to. Does this do the job? Yes, it does, not a problem. So, uh, so far I've got 500 plus rounds uh, through this pistol with a optic on here and have had a uh, few issues with it on there. There has been a couple, we'll talk about that here in just a second. With that being said, uh, really no major complaints here. If you wanna swap out the sights, you can, they are dovetailed in. Um, you'll need to check uh, a sight manufacturer whether or not they will fit um, the A-Rex Delta, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's talk about the trigger. Trigger is going to be very similar to that of any striker fired pistol out there, specifically the Glock. Uh, so you're gonna have some take up here. It's going to have a trigger dingus for uh, safety. So you're gonna have some take up and then here is your brake, your reset, really short, tactile and audible and then your brake again. There you go, one more time, let's do that one more time. Here is your reset, I mean really short, and then your brake there again. One of the great things I like about this pistol, I've got about 700 rounds through this so far, um, and that wall on here is really nice, it's really crisp. Uh, it doesn't really sponge very much when you pull the trigger, it just kind of breaks over, and that is a very, dramatic change from what you might be used to if you've shot Glocks very much. So there are the three major things that I look at in a pistol and they do it very well, I would say. Um, one of the things that I do like about this is the fact that it does have a cocking indicator on the back here. This 
Cocking indicator is actually really kind of cool. Normally it's just kind of something I don't even think about and just kind of pass over. But um, as you pull the trigger, you will see that it protrudes out and it will disappear once it breaks over. And that's actually a really cool safety feature because as you holster this pistol, because I carry appendix, as you holster, I like to place my thumb over the back plate of the pistol. And if something gets caught into the, uh, the trigger well and starts to pull that trigger, you're going to feel that, that loaded uh, or that caulking indicator protrude out against your thumb. And that tells you to stop what you're doing, let, stop everything you're doing and reverse back the direction that you are going and try to figure out what is binding binding up in your holster and in your trigger so just keep all of that in mind so that's a safety feature i really do like controls on here are exactly where you would expect them to be i really like the control on the slide lever here um, it is really easy easy for me to access it with the thumb the next piece is going to be the magazine release. And from the manufacturer, I will say that that magazine release is really nice because it's pretty flush fitting, but at the same time, it was pretty stiff when I got it out of the box. I had to really work some manual reloads over and over and over again to loosen it up and then get it out to the range and uh, get it through some uh, magazine change reloads. So that's another thing that you're going to need to be very cautious about. And then the last thing that I'll say about this pistol is it's got front and rear slide serrations kind of in a diamond formation. Those feel really, really good because as you have your hands up against the slide, maybe your palm comes up over onto the slide, you don't have that texture up against your hand very much. And then it's going to provide with a really good grip as you cycle that slide. Also, aesthetically, it looks pretty nice. And then it's got a nice Picatinny section for you to add a light on there should you want to do that as well. So that's a major overhaul of everything going on with this pistol. And I have really enjoyed shooting this. Now, let's talk about some of the things that I'm not a big fan about when it comes to this pistol. First and foremost is the grip angle. I talked about it a little bit already. Uh, I'm used to all of my pistols being kind of a point and shoot type of pistol. As soon as I bring up my pistol and present it, the sights usually are pretty much in line. The red dot is where I want it to be. With this pistol, not so much. And that's a training issue and I fully understand the fact that I need to work on draws and figure that out and get that red dot exactly where I want it. But coming right out of the box, something that you're gonna to need to change a little bit and make sure that you're ready and understand that. So keep that in mind. The next thing is this is sprung for 124 grain. Coming from a European country, that should be a uh, telltale sign that they're going to prefer, prefer uh, NATO spec ammunition, so 124 grain ammunition. And here in the United States, we run 115 grain most of the time. For a company that is going to market a pistol in the United States, I feel that they should do something to change the spring in this to allow it to run 115 grain uh, just fine. Now, did I have any major issues with this? No, I had like one stove pipe that I can remember. And uh, from there, I really didn't have any major issues. However, I did notice after getting done shooting this, and you can see it right here with the GoPro footage, that uh, there was a lot of shell casings out in front of me. I didn't quite understand why. I would have figured all of it would have been to my right, somewhere between the two and four o'clock position to my right. But no, there was a lot of shell casings out in front of me um, at the 12 to one o'clock position. And what I found is here on my RMR, there's a lot of nicks, a lot of brass nicks on the RMR. What that was telling me was that as the rounds were ejecting, it was bouncing off of the RMR as the slide was moving forward. So is that a spring issue? I don't know. None of my other pistols do that. But what I did notice was uh, shooting 124 grain. I didn't really find that I had that issue just with 115 grain. So maybe the slide's moving too fast or maybe it's moving too slow. 
I'm not 100% sure, but to see all of those nicks on my RMR and then to see all the shell casings out in front of me tells me that uh, this was definitely meant for something other than 115 grain. So the thing that I have to say about that is Canik had this issue with their um, TP9s. Uh, it didn't run 115 grain reliably if you started out with it. If you started with 124 or 147 grain then, and broke it in, then it would feed 115 grains, no problem. But what I have found with the Canics is they run 115 grain, no problem now. Uh, especially the two that I've shot here recently, I've had no issues running 115 grain. So I would expect that from manufacturers like Arex and others who are importing firearms from uh, Europe or European countries uh, to take that in mind and kind of change things as well. Uh, so the SAR-9, the SAR-USA SAR-9, that is another pistol that I noticed that it had erratic uh, ejection. And uh, that is something that has to do with it being sprung differently and wanting to use 124 grains instead of 115s. There you go. There's my soapbox on that. So <laughs> with that being said, this has been a great pistol. Now the question is, what would you use the A-Rex Delta X for? Um, or even one of the other models? Well, that's really going to be up to you. The X is going to be something that is really nice because it's going to come with a 17 round magazine. And then it's also going to come with an extended 19 round magazine. It's got an extended base here on it. So that's pretty cool and uh, it feels really, really good in the hand uh, with those extra rounds because the center of gravity is then pushed further back into your hand so it feels good. However, one of the things that I did notice was that it ended up being a little flippy because of all of that weight transfer further back into your hand, you ended up having a little bit more of a muzzle rise in this if you started shooting faster. That is a great point for why this ledge right here is needed. Really got to bear down on that ledge with your non-firing hand, non-firing thumb, good firm grip, and that will help mitigate that recoil. I think that uh, something like this in the L or M version would be a little bit better. The X is one of those situations where somebody wants a shorter slide uh, and a full-size frame. Maybe your hands are really, really big, but you still want a compact pistol. Uh, this would be a great uh, pistol for you. For me, not so much because I'm a pretty small guy. I'm 5'7", usually fluctuate between 185 to 195, <laughs> depending on how often I get into the, uh, into the gym. So carrying in the appendix, the pistol grip here is going to be the most difficult piece for me to uh, conceal and a Glock 19 is about the size that I can get away with on a regular basis. So with that being said, the X probably wouldn't be a good concealed carry for me, but for you guys out there, uh, maybe the X is exactly what you're looking for. And that is one of the big kickers about this pistol. If you want something that is not a Glock 19X, you can pick up one of these and it's going to come in about a couple hundred dollars cheaper than a Glock 19X. So there is uh, that aspect of it as well. So usually coming in somewhere around that uh, four to 450 price range, you might be able to find it cheaper, maybe a little bit more expensive depending on when and where you buy it, but right around that $400 mark, you should be able to find one of these. And with it coming optics ready from the manufacturer, that is a major, major plus. So there you have it. There is the Arex Delta X Gen 2. Um, besides some of the minor things that I wasn't too happy with, uh, with it being oversprung on the magazine release, um, not really sprung for uh, 115 grain ammunition, with all of that being said, this is still a viable option for a lot of people, especially for individuals who are on a budget. So definitely check in on those. I think that you guys will really, really like this pistol. So keep that in mind. And another thing about the X2 is when it comes down to it, capacity is king. So um, having a couple extra rounds on a pistol like this might be very, very healthy. 
With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and call this video done. I really do appreciate you guys hanging out until the end of the video. Once again, if you guys are interested, jump on my Fit and Fire newsletter. Uh, you can find that on fitandfire.com. Right on the homepage, you can sign up and I'd really appreciate the support. Again, I'm not doing a Patreon. That is my thing uh, to provide you guys something to save you some money at the same time. Uh, some of those links are affiliate links and I will get a small kickback to support the channel. I would really appreciate it. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much. As always, I appreciate your guys' support and we'll see you next time. Take care, freedom through strength. See you guys later, bye y'all.